Do you notice the world falling apart? Are you tired of the lies and deception? If so, then welcome to my channel where we expose the lies and uncover the truth, helping you get ready for what's coming in the world and helping you get prepared now. Welcome to All Day Everyday Preparedness. to a live look over Capitol Hill this afternoon. The clock is ticking for the House of Representatives to pass a series of bills to keep the government open by September 30th or face one of the largest potential shutdowns in American history. Clock is ticking for Congress to pass a spending bill to avoid a government shutdown. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who is facing challenges within his own party, outlined a new plan that he says is confident will help end the standoff once the House returns Tuesday. But leaders of the largest federal employee labor union are less optimistic and warn the writing is on the wall, they say. McConnell and his chamber returned to Capitol Hill Tuesday to a ticking clock, counting down to a potential government shutdown. From a potential government shutdown if Congress can't come together on an agreement. And that looks increasingly unlikely. So, Well, the glaring concern facing this president and lawmakers, for that matter, is the possibility of a government shutdown. All right, no resolution in sight. What could be one of the largest government shutdowns in U.S. history draws closer. To hear the testimony about conditions in some of the 200,000 homes on military bases that are managed by private contractors. Marine spouse Crystal Cornwall spoke of issues she had at Camp Pendleton and other families experienced at Camp Lejeune. So while these pinhead politicians are arguing over who's going to pay the light bill, who's really suffering? And that's our American servicemen and women and their families. Take a look at some of these deplorable conditions that they have to live in. Military families say they're fed up with inaction on widespread housing problems. We told you how our reporting has uncovered unsafe living conditions at bases around the country and practices to silence the families from talking about these experiences are happening as well. Channel 9's Samantha Manning spoke to a group of military families now seeking help from the U.S. Congress. Family after family. This is a systemic issue. The experiences are frustratingly similar. We have lived in three back-to-back -back duty stations, and each house that we have lived in on base housing has had some form of mold problem. Reports of mold, infestation of bugs, and structural problems, often leading to health concerns for the families living in these homes on base that are run by private companies. They say it's their kids they worry for the most nosebleeds, allergic pink eye. It's extremely scary and it breaks your heart. It's why these military spouses formed an advocacy group to help other military families just like them. They volunteer their time to help families navigate the process when faced with housing problems. There should never be a family who moves into a house that has life health safety issues. So what do you guys think? I mean, we have money for wars. Just like I said, we have money for COVID. But we see our servicemen and women and their families uh, living, you know, in some deplorable conditions, you know, all throughout the uh, United States and bases around the world. So what do you guys think? The government is, uh, again, they're pulling the same tricks, same tactics, saying they're going to run out of money. We can't take care of our soldiers and their families living with mold and uh, backed up sewage and uh, rats, roaches, you know, you name it, guys. They're doing their service honorably for this country, and they deserve for them and their families to live comfortably. Well, that's going to be a wrap for this video. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the thanks button. But guys, continue to prepare, and as always, be blessed.